Okay, now that you understand what language is and the very basics of it, um, let's look at the characteristics of language. So if you remember from chapter one, the overall purpose of language is to create shared meaning, is be, to be able to communicate with someone, to get a point across for y'all both to be on the same page. That is it. So there are three characteristics of language that make it a little difficult for that to happen. That's why we have some miscommunications, things like that. Um, the first of, this, of these characteristics is language being arbitrary. So remember we learned that language is a system of symbols or words. So these symbols or words that we create, they actually hold no literal meaning if you really think about it. So A-P-P-L-E or apple holds no meaning on its own unless it's recognized by a language or uh, a language community or a speech community or a dialect, unless it's, it is recognized by the same, the people who speak the same language, it really holds no meaning. Um, and then it's just decided upon by that language or speech community or dialect or whatever. It just is decided on that that's the word choice. So it might be something like, you know, in America, we would say, maybe not everywhere, but a lot of places might say um, restroom. Whereas in England, they might say toilet. That is the agreed upon word that they said, that's what we're going to refer to going to the place where you need to go to pee. And that's what we said. This is where we're going to call the place you need to pee. So that is, that's just a basic example, but you see that it's arbitrary. It was just a word that was made up by somebody who constructed it. And then everyone decided to use it. Um, then we look at language being abstract. So along with it being arbitrary, certain words can, like our, the words that we choose can be very specific or very vague. So if someone just said, oh, I have a pet, you really don't know what kind of pet they're referring to, but something might come to your head. Like if I said, I have a pet, right now you might think about, okay, Miss Peter's pet, and so you have something in your head. But I wasn't specific on that, so that was abstract. Now, instead of using abstract language, I could use concrete language, which would mean I would say something like, oh, I have a black cat named Salem. He's my pet. That would be making it very concrete. You have a very clear idea of the type of pet that I have. So when we use abstract language, sometimes we, it, can, it, can cause, it can hinder the shared meaning happening. So whenever you talk to someone, especially somebody you don't know very well, who, you know, I think in other chapters, we're going to talk about, um, when you have historical context and all of that. But if you're talking to somebody you don't know well, it's best to use concrete language so they understand and have a clear picture of what you mean to obtain shared meaning. Okay, so then language changes over time. And this is the last characteristic. And that means that, you know, over time, new words get created, words kind of fall out of use. Um, I think there's one other reason that, let's see, there's several different reasons why, but, those are kind of the main ones that I was going to focus on. Like so new words are being invented like the word selfie. We started using selfie because there, we got these things called cell phones. And there's this new phenomenon where people were like, hey, I have a really good camera. I look good today. Mm, take a picture. Right? And so you took a picture and this just started happening a lot. And it started becoming socially acceptable. And so we said, okay, we need a word now to describe this phenomenon. And we said, all right, let's call it a selfie. Okay, so then ever then people said that caught on. And then before you know it, our whole language community uses, well, I guess I don't really know for sure. I'm assuming a whole language community uses it. But I know for sure that the, the U.S. dialect of English, we all use uh, the word selfie. So that's a word that was created. Then you have words that change. Um, their meaning changes. For whatever reason, maybe they don't really, it wasn't used a lot. And so then we decided, hmm, we'll use it a different way. Like the word cool, right? So you use the word cool to describe something being maybe fashionable or um, likable, you know, kind of however you want to, to say that. But cool, you know, also meant that it like actually being colder, cooler outside. But over time, we've decided to take that word and mean something different. 
Um, my, and I think this is really important generationally. You see a lot of differences in generations. And so remember when we talked about um, your cultural identity in, the, in chapter three, how you're part of a certain age group that is, has a whole identity around that. Um, so you may use certain words that maybe the generations before you did not use. Uh, or, so for like an example, my husband always says the word tight for something being cool. Like he'll say, oh, that's tight. And I just want to laugh because I want to be like, no one uses says that anymore. Um, or my best friend says crunk. And I'm like, again, no one says that anymore. Um, but those were words that were that were taken. Well, I guess the crunk was something that was created. That was a created word. But my husband saying tight, that was a word that once held one meaning. And then we gave it new meaning to describe something being cool. So you can see that in your own um, in your own life, you probably have some words like that from your generation that were used that either were created or they held new meaning.